Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Zero Escape 999, where we librarian are... Librarian edition. I couldn't even say it. We are now the new librarian. Yes. Went to the library. Prairie, Troy. Prairie. <laughs> 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 All right, so... Uh, we decided we think we looked at everything up top. We could be wrong, so we came down here to investigate to see if we can find any more pop-up books. Uh, conjecture. What's that about? Like, magic or physics stuff or something? Right, I bet it's about jewelry, isn't it? It may have an odd title, but it's actually a very respectable mathematics book. It deals with one of the unsolved problems of additive number theory. Uh, sorry I said anything. I just Look, want let's not get into this right now. I just want Steak to follow me around all day and talk about stuff. Let's see what we've got here. So many books. I wonder what this one's... Whoa, what's this? Warm. Oh? Sorry. Oh. Oh, uh, no. I, um, I'm... Uh, sorry. Hey, what's the deal with the sappy stuff? That was weird. That was very weird. Ooh, there's one of those thingies, I think. The red book. At that side. Modern Japanese literature, huh? The other side. The oh. other side. Found it. Hey, there's another one of those picture books here. Something about these things feels kind of nice, you know? I don't think Brings so. Brings back good memories. I guess even people like Seven were kids once. You guys are so mean to each other. No shit, you little brat. Hey guys, cool it. All right, I think I'm gonna take up th this picture book with me. Oh yeah, this time. It's got a magic wand on it, okay. So, what's inside? Well, aren't you going to open it? Pretty sure it's just gonna have pages inside. Smart, whoa. S-E-5? Five? Looks like another pop-up book. This book has an S-E, a dash, and a number five sticking out. I might be impressed if I was five. Okay. Where's our other... Light bulb. You can't do anything with them. I feel like you're gonna use these books with the light bulb. Large Life round of kinky. kinky. <laughs> I, I thought we had done this already. Nah, probably not. Okay. Um, so we're still looking for the light bulb. Yeah. Origin of Japanese folklore. Looks like there's a bunch of books about Japanese culture in here. Mostly ones about folklore, though. Well, the folklore can cover a wide range of subjects. Histor history, urban life, religious trends, environmental changes, oral traditions. Folklore can cover these all of these things if you know where to look. Guys, I'm telling you, <laughs> death is imminent. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. this looks pretty deep. <laughs> Agriculture and his. To be fair, Jim Kai is the one clicking on all the books. I <laughs> I'm am trying. There are books over here. I can't read them. Okay. Yeah, I really. I, I feel wish like I, there's something up with those stupid. Iron plate is bolted down. I don't think it's a door. I think it's just a wall. Okay. okay. Um, I think there's something with these books, but I don't know what. We can't do anything with them. Oh, Wait, did we look at the shelf up above? Yeah. Oh. There's another one like that over here. He means something like primary number theory or analytical number theory or geometry. Oh my gosh, how'd you know? Nobody said anything about those. Well, number theory is usually split into four chief disciplines. If there was... Oh. That just blew right past everything. I'm just gonna go with Snake said. A lot of smart things. A lot of smart things about four dudes. Yeah, Pythagorean Theorem. This is a famous one. Sounds like there are a number of math books in this section. Yep. I don't. I'm assuming we're missing. Uh, Big opening is the door to the library. It's pretty impressive. Almost looks like the door to a shrine or a church or something. There's another, another door after it and then a passage way beyond that. At the end of the passageway is a door with that Neptune symbol engraved on it. Hurry up. We need to find the key with the mark of Neptune. We're okay. trying, but you keep interrupting us. That sounds like a job for the best brother and sister team in the world. Man, it's like Seven and I don't even exist. Then why don't you guys find the last goddamn light bulb? Yeah, it's a scaffold. I, d I just... The note on top of the table, it says lights to the books. Where the the handrail is, is made of metal. Hat stand. You put hats on it. Thanks, genius. Uh. It's it, like it gets so disorienting in here. They all look the same. That's my problem. Yeah. It says Ryman up hypothesis. What is there to hypothesize about Riemann? It's pretty straightforward. 
Heavens, no. There are many factors. Length, girth, lubrication, or lack of... It's an exciting and rapidly growing field. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been just worth everything. <sighs> the only thing that's weird is those four books and I don't know what to do with them. Yeah, all right. We're going to just kind of quickly go through all these shells. It's a weird book, Junpei. Indian mathematics? Haha, uh -huh, that's funny. Why is that funny? Okay. I have no idea. She's nuts. Folklore, yes. Okay, that's where we found the picture book. Yeah, okay. okay. What about next? The kids are going to click on over there. Oh, wait. Uh, nope. So that's the... Dim lights on the floor. Okay. If I could change out the bulbs and ah, uh, what's the use wishing? I don't have any more light bulbs. Okay. Oh, it goes all the way to all four corners of the room. Books are in all sorts of language. I can't read them. Okay. Wait, Ooh. can I? Oh, that's going to open. Sorry. So, all right. So we've seen everything down here. Yep. So that means we have to go up. I feel like we've looked everywhere up here. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just each shelf. I feel like we need some good book shelving music. So yeah. He's not doing it, man. Keep waiting for there to be a mummy that pops out of these shelves. I mean, Remember, that would make that would make sense. Somewhere here. Yeah, like, it's, it's very disorienting to try to figure out, like, what we've checked. Mm -hmm. Property values going up in space, too, these days. Man, I guess times are tough for aliens, too. This one says cosmic inflation. I'm telling you, in the real world, we're dead. Oh, yeah. I believe that's going to be about electrolysis and an electrolyte solution. Electrolysis? There we go. Your electrolysis. These particular laws were set down by Michael Faraday. Okay. Quantum gravity. Seven, do you have any idea what this is? How about you start by using real words? Then maybe we'll get somewhere. There we have general relativity. Oh, I know this one. That's Einstein, right? Even snakes like dudes. No more commentary. Yeah. Gonna move on. Supersymmetric string theory and 10 dimensional space time. Uh, they're just talking about super string theory. It's a theory of reality where, hmm, how to explain? It says that all elements of the universe are governed by the vibrations and harmonics of tiny supersymmetric strings. Well, duh. <laughs> we were just here. We were just here. Okay. So now we're on the right, so we'll start at the top. Nothing. Nothing. We were, were, what? I don't know. I still feel like the only weird thing is that shelf with those four books, but I don't think we can do anything with them. Welcome to Matrick and Lizzo spend 40 minutes on one puzzle. I feel like the internet's like, oh my God, it's right there. What are you guys doing? It's like literally right in front of your face. There's pro I mean, there's probably something that we're not clicking on. I just get so... Disoriented going through these shelves. I'm gonna say, and I have a hard it's time because when you so flip around in this room, it makes me sick. Like it's just, it's just like if thing if they if everything was distinct, it would be so much yeah, better. I kind of agree. <sighs> I just is there anything else in the shelf? All six books seem to be pointing at the cylinder number lock. Yeah. Yep. something with them yeah it's it's too weird 
It's light blue. It's got the volume number written on the lower part of the spine. I don't... Like, I feel stuck, but just because I cannot figure out where I've been. You know what would be great in these things? If they could give you, like, a little, almost like a pen to color, and you could actually, like, X out which shelves we've done. Yeah. That would make my life a lot easier. I know, granted, we're supposed to be June Pie, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, but if you make a room that is so similar, how am I supposed to differentiate things? Scaffold made of wire netting that goes all the way around the edges of the cylinder. Is there only the one way up? Yes. Okay. Wait, no? I I mean, and that's the other thing. I can't tell. Does that just wrap around? It should, I think so. I don't know. I think maybe it is two different. So well, does you that keep going up the same one? Now try the other one, which is that one. Nope, same thing. Well, no, it actually takes you to. I mean, it's the same area, but it's like a cross. Right. I don't know. That's what I mean. Like this is just so disorienting. Is there anything you do with those ladders against the walls? Nope. So I, I'm pretty sure the three pop-up books go into the thing down there once yeah. we have the light. Once we have the I last light bulb. I can't figure out where the last light bulb is. Don't shove him. I can't. Don't push. All right. But now that you bring it up. Oh. Um, do you do you think we should hold hands while there aren't any handrails? I'll be fine. I can feel vibrations in the floor that tell me where I am. Um, uh, that's not what I meant. Are you guys really not brother and sister? Yeah, some parts have the junction of the junction of handrails and others don't. Man, this thing is narrow. I feel like I'm walking across a tightrope. Jeez, Snake, aren't you scared? Imagine a wall 20 inches wide that runs along the top of a 10-story building. Could you walk that wall, Junpei? No way! And what about a balance beam in a gymnasium? Oh, well, that's easy. Hmm. You don't find that strange? A balance beam is far narrower than 20 inches. So why is it that a balance beam poses no challenge to you, but the hypothetical 10-story wall does? The light can easily turn people into cowards. From time to time, a life in darkness can give you courage. I want to find another light bulb. Yeah, I just like, I just want to know where I've been. Mm -hmm. That's all I want. Hmm. Wall with iron plates bolted to it. All right, check that, check that. I don't even know where a third... It, it, it's, that's the only thing, but you can't click on anything. I don't understand. Do you have to like... I'm waiting to like have to click on the, the absolute right one and that is going to drive me nuts. But how would you even know which one it is? Is it something to... Hmm. No, that doesn't make sense. I'm going to say they talked about... Mathematics. I thought German mathematics came up at one point. And they were talking over here. I don't know. I think like every topic has come up at some point. <laughs> I just don't even know. This is... <sighs> like, I want to figure this out. But... I, I just feel like the way the room is set up is just awful. I hate, I literally hate this puzzle because of the room layout. It's just, it's like so clunky to move around. It's so hard to tell where you've been. We not been here? Uh, I guess not. You're just saying that because it's got muscle, whatever. 
There aren't any other books. Oh, maybe we have. Maybe we just didn't. Principles of monkey behavior. Don't. We're just gonna. Sorry, just gonna go right through that. Yeah. <laughs> just want to figure out what we need. Well, good news is, by the time we die on this ship, we will have read every single book. No. Can we actually? Um. Wait. What? Have we not look? I s there's no way we didn't look at this. It this one called. All right. We found something. Oh, wait. Wait. We found something. Oh my god. Huh. Looks like there's a whole lot of space behind these books. Look, Junpai. I think there's something hidden behind the books. It's the freaking light bulb because every other book looks the freaking same. So it was so hard to tell where we haven't checked. We'll be in therapy after this episode. I I literally couldn't even tell you where I looked. I don't either. Good job, I, though. <laughs> I'm worried now it's going to be like, you're missing a picture book. And then I might have to, you know, blow my brains out. <laughs> okay. So can I? All right. So there are three lights in here. I'm going to change these bulbs now because no. I couldn't just change one before. And now they should. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Whoa, those light bulbs really make a difference. It's pretty bright in here now. Now stick the picture books on those stands. Yeah. Small fan closure with nine sides. There are three of these things that look kind of like music stands. Okay, how about we try putting these picture books on the stands? Guild Drake 5? Ah, Shell Drake 5. Oh, Shell Drake 5. Yeah, you just can't see behind Clover's face. Awesome! It looks like it worked. Way to go, Junpei. Good job, buddy. There's something projected on the bottom. These letters, they seem familiar. Yep, go back and hit the Sheldrake book number five. You are totally the frick right. The Sheldrake on the spine of the book. It's got the volume number written in the lower part of the spine. Can I grab? What? Do I have to, do we have to talk about this? Sheldrake five? <laughs> I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Guys, yeah, we have this figured I think out. It was somewhere around here. <laughs> we might Let's have looked too look. many times at these books. Okay. Sheldrake. Have you heard of him? Sheldrake, I mean. Yeah. Very Lotus familiar. Told me about it. <laughs> There's a British oh, biochemist he was named Sheldrake. The guy that he has a rather has interesting oh, theory. I forgot about Morphogenetic that. Morphogenetic fields, which relies on the theory of morphic resonance. What happens when you play this game over the span really? of like eight weeks? From Lotus, huh? Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. She did? Yeah, um, what was it? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first oh, is that's right, this whole thing. Yep. And the other is danger. <sighs> that girl. I told her not to tell anyone. Well, she we did. thought you were dead. Why? Yeah. Well, look, man. I didn't push it because we're in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Don't give me that. About the experiment. Ugh. Very well, fine. I'll tell you everything, but not here. Let's move to the top floor. What do you think you're going to drown down there? And we haven't found the effing key yet. Hello? Key? I suppose Escaping. I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet and why I made sure Clover did oh, as well. Oh, we're getting out of earshot of Seven and Clover. <sighs> Now to I be do. honest, the explanation <laughs> it took me a second is quite too. simple. Zero told me not to. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. That's oh, yeah. a braille card. It looks just like the one you showed us earlier. So you had two cards. No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? You only read part of it. I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However... They were not the only thing on the card. There was something I didn't read. Well, perhaps I should say there was something I couldn't read. And that was? Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. Oof. It's a threat on our lives. Oh. Well, um... Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero Two? I don't believe she did. But... Doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah, 
To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the things she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs happy as a clam now that you're back. That's yeah, very true. Us. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us, no matter what the situation was. <sighs> hey, uh, Snake? Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Clover told me about... The girl. I see. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. How the experiments had taken place simultaneously at two locations. One being the ship and the other being a building in Nevada. And the girl that died during the experiment. She told you all that, did she? Hmm. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us to determine is who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. There were yeah. four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo, Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, Kagechika Musashido. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Everyone that's ace. Hi, Grandpa Uno. Nijisaki was his right-hand man and did the lion's share of the planning. That Kubota looks like the ninth the man. the research and development yep. division. Musashido was their majority stockholder. It was these four people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm. Let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it, and Nijisaki put it all together. Kubota developed the technology required, and Musashido provided the cash. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota, Musashido... Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top-secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten completed their team, and they were able to begin the project. They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The this is an odd vessel, experiment. <laughs> I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Because they're intelligent. Experiments with humans produce the same results. The more people who knew the answer to a question, the more there were who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why is that? How could it happen? Hmm. The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. And through that field, the resonant event transmits information related to that answer. That's essentially the idea behind morphogenetic fields. But that's just a theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it? Yeah. Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people, right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say one million people were to do a handstand right now. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Uh... Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? Yeah. Now. 
If there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Interesting. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? That's pretty Come cool. Come on, there's no way. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? Mm. A person who has the power to army. write to the field and someone who can read from the same. You could think of them as the writer and the reader or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. And then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes. Close enough, at least. Come on, that's just crazy. Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei? Have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? No, no I, I I've not heard of it. You place a pair of, of subjects books? in separate yeah. rooms. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. In theory, it is supposed to test for the existence of telepathy. Oh, so why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. That seems shady on so many levels. Some of that sound had potential. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were kidnapped. There were nine pairs of siblings taken for 18 children total. Uh. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. Okay, so that's where Clover was. Yep. The children who excelled at receiving were put in group A. So that's where Snake and Santa Group were. Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared we in your mind? just did that. It may seem obvious yeah. to say so. But we didn't get the but answer. that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. That's where Hongo came in. Okay. They set up a number of puzzles across oh, the gigantic. Okay. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. It was of a death course, game. he hadn't forgotten to include danger. He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. By forcing the children into a life or death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every Aww. detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Could Solve we actually the be in the building? Throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. Did he make the building look exactly like the gigantic? Could we actually be in the building instead of the ship? That would be nuts. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink and your brothers and sisters will drown. Those were his orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? 
It was because NASA had access to a replica of the Apollo 13 capsule. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. Transing it was the same with the gigantic and building Q. Mm -hmm. The children from Group Q had to use the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage. Try simpler. <laughs> hey, hey Junpei, shape. Snake! How much longer are you two gonna sit around on those bony asses? Get down agree. here already! He's I'm right. Die. Let's go, shall we? We Wait. don't have much time. We need to get out of here and soon. I'd like Hold to it. point out your morphin and one more thing I want to ask you. didn't help us solve this puzzle snake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Oh. Yes. I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine Santa. no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's June name and was Santa. Aoi. But... Mm. Brother's name is... A the sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> you say Akane. Her name was Akane. That was the girl who died. <laughs> Akane Kurashiki died nine years ago? Then, then it, who is Chun? That's. No, 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 no. That, that's impossible. Yep. It can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do too. It doesn't mean anything. Oh, it means something. Nope. There was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. Nope. <laughs> Is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Oh, uh, no, it's it's nothing. I'm fine. Let's get back down there, all right? <sighs> he opened his heart and told you exactly what's going yeah. on. Why wouldn't you just tell him that? Didn't I ask? What's he didn't want to know. Name? I just couldn't get the words to come out. It's because you didn't want to know. Mm-hmm. Or because you already know. You have to go get the shield break. Yeah, can I go... Actually get this damn book now. <laughs> Sheldrake, this is it. This is what the shadow picture was pointing 45 to. 45 minutes later. <laughs> um, but it didn't it say five at the end of the shadow picture? My God, Junpei, like, what does that actually mean? Let's talk about this for another 35 minutes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ad living. I'm telling you, these people are dead. There are so we many are pretty. We are pretty dead at this point. <laughs> Gotta have a little fun with it. Sorry. Yes, I think we need to find the fifth volume. There's a button. Well, would you look at that? There's a big red button behind this book. I guess we should press this button. You know what would have been a smart idea? These books are weird. Maybe we should just take them out. <laughs> I know, oh, that's what I want. come on. Stupid bookshelves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Are we gonna have to make a choice? Oh, God. What was that sound? It sounded like something really big was moving. Came from the top floor. All right, let's go check it out. <laughs> I hate you, book library thing. Yeah, there it is. Right, well, I couldn't even find that on the way through. <laughs> What's that? Oh God, now what? 13, 14, all right, I'm sorry, eight. No, 13, 14, 10, 13. There's a keyboard in front of the numbers, and there's some rumor numerals on the wall. It's got to be a hint of some sort. 13, 14, 10. I start, at first I started counting. I'm like, wait, that's not 15. And 13. Those are all rumor numerals. Do you think we just need to put in the numbers from the wall on the keyboard? No, you can't. Keyboard doesn't have any number keys. Oh. 
you can't type stuff like three or four. Hmm. hmm. Then that means we're counting letters of the alphabet, <laughs> which we will do in the next episode. <laughs> Well, that was exciting stuff. That, that was fun. I, I mean, I'm glad we at least got a good chunk of story for uh, for our trouble. Right. Yeah, that it just I, a, a, a few small changes of that puzzle could have made it really interesting as opposed to just, I think I've been here before. We're color and spatially challenged. We are a little bit. Yeah. And it didn't help that every time he turned the camera, I had to close my eyes because <laughs> I was going to puke. <laughs> Should have just taken one for the team, man. <laughs> You found it. You did fine. Going to end the recording before I get hit. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it for us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.